I was listening to this one interview with David Morgan and Greg Hunter, with Greg Hunter hosting this podcast or this video blog. And both of these individuals have been on my channel, and they're nice enough to come on. But I found one point interesting of what David Morgan was saying. Okay, he had some silver and gold forecasts. But if you listen closely to this interview, he stated that the only way that these predictions will not come true and higher gold and silver prices within the next few years is if there's a black swan event. In my opinion, we have already witnessed a black swan event that nobody's talking about. And now let's go to 2008 and what specifically was the black swan event. All right, I want to talk about black swans, but before I do, 2008 there were black swan events like I mentioned and this is from the book Getting Off Track how government actions and interventions cause I forget the rest of the title or I can't see it right now but let's just read a little bit of this and I've mentioned this quite a few times but I could show you the text of what's going on figure 12 shows using the same LIBOR OIS measure of tension in the financial markets as in figure 7 how dramatically the financial crisis worsened in 2008. Recall that in our research paper on the subject, John Williams and I call the jump in spreads in August 2007, a black swan in the money market. The October 2008 events were even more unusual. Not only was the crisis prolonged for more than a year, but it worsened according to this measure by a factor of four. It became a serious credit crunch with large spillovers, seriously weakening an economy already suffering from the lingering impacts of high oil price bout and the housing bust. Notice the close correlation in figure 12 between our measure of counterparty risk and the LIBOR OIS spread, demonstrating convincingly that all along the problems in the market were related to risk rather than liquidity. Many commentators have argued that the crisis worsened because the U.S. government, specifically the Treasury and the Federal Reserve, decided not to intervene to prevent the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers or the weekend of September 13th and 14th. Okay, so what basically is going on in this analysis? The black swan, some people may argue, hey, it was subprime, sure. You could argue that it was subprime, but at the end of the day, if you want to look at, or if you want to take the analysis to the next level, the black swan was actually in the credit markets, 2007, 2008, as I've mentioned before. And if you want to look at some spreads here, I talk about the three-month LIBOR OIS spread in the blue here. You could see this usually had a 10 basis point spread for actually from six years from 2001 to 2007 this graph only has it from January 2007 but look at how it widened in late 2007 right close to 100 basis points red flag so there was problems in the credit markets people and banks couldn't roll over credit the way that they used to and because of the fractional reserve system that we have well many people are gonna get fearful because of that once you start to see people getting scared, bankruptcies, the list goes on and on. And you have to remember that this event really happened right around the time where Bear Stearns hedge funds blew up, dealing with subprime. And then you saw Lehman, 2008, LIBOR OIS spreads hit 365 basis points. Now, what does that have to do with today? Like I mentioned before, I think that we've already spotted I've already spotted one black swan, in my opinion. We could look at it right now again. All right, I want to go back to this one article in February. What the hell? February 2014. And it talks about, number one, the credit crunch. You could go to it right now. Crisis gouge rises to record highest swaps avoided. So let's just go to a quick line item here. What I do see are increasing parallels between China and the U.S. in the run-up to the global financial crisis, said Patrick Parrott Green, a London-based strategist at Australia and New Zealand banking group LTD. Shibor slash repo, similar to LIBOR OIS. Shadow banking is subprime. Credit spreads are widening as they did in 2007. Money growth is softening as tightening bites. 
2007, U.S. banks began to hoard cash when defaults on some prime mortgages led two Bear Stearns hedge funds to seek bankruptcy protection, pushing up borrowing costs. The gap between the three-month LIBOR and dollars and OIS rates soared to a record 364 basis points in October 2008. So this is what I was talking about, right? I mentioned Bear Stearns, and I also mentioned Lehman Brothers, right? Basis, 364 basis point spread. So I didn't even look at this article until I looked at my email and I emailed this article to myself. So interesting, they had similar points that I was talking about. But anyways, now that's one black swan, but if you want to look at a potential, another potential black swan, it could be a geopolitical black swan. And now let's look at that. All right. I think the other black swan that no one's talking about is what could happen on the geopolitical front. And if you want to look at Crimea, right, from Ukraine, I think this is just the beginning. If we do see, we have already seen the annexation of Crimea now. Rush, it's going to be part of Russia. And we know how the United States is and how they want a significant sphere of influence. But at the same time, this is what I talked about in the other interview or the podcast. So if Russia wants to have more of a sphere of influence in the world, and while the United States is weakening, this is going to create some tensions, as Robert Kagan, neoconservative, stated, right? I don't agree with everything that Kagan talks about, but he's absolutely right. There's going to be tension. So if it's Crimea, then what is next on the horizon? I mean, if it's only Crimea and that's it, then, yeah, you could throw this out the window. But now, if you want to look at Crimea, what's going to happen? What is the Federal Reserve doing? They're tapering. When they're tapering, what ends up happening is it creates dislocations within the markets because it's manipulated like crazy, right? It papers over the messes in the third world countries, and they could live beyond their own means. But when tapering begins, you see all this selling going on, most likely in derivatives markets, which blows up countries' currencies. You saw India's currency blow up to a certain degree last year. You're seeing the Indonesian rupee blowing up. I think it was this year. Turkish lira, I think, that's the currency. That blew up. The Ukrainian currency was blowing up. And this is what Putin did. He wanted to try to help his guys out, his Russian peeps out in Crimea, which is or which was formerly part of Ukraine, now part of Russia. So, if you want to look at that, that this could be another black swan on a geopolitical front. What else is going to happen in the financial markets that creates tensions with the United States and the rest of the world? Could you see some crisis blowing up in the Middle East? I wouldn't be surprised. And you have to remember another thing. Barack Obama... He's not the strongest of the presidents out there. And I could argue that George Bush wasn't the strongest of presidents out there. Both of these guys have made foolish decisions. And we know how George Bush was on the top of his game. Or, I mean, the polls indicated that there was a lot of support for him right after 9-11. 81% approval rating. Obama had a huge approval rating in 2008, 2009, early 2009, right? And... How did Bush fare at the end of his presidency? Well, no one liked him. A lot of people hated his guts. That's how Obama got in. And in 2015, 2016, you're going to see, in my opinion, parallels to that. And we could potentially see a geopolitical event happen. I know the economic event, that's probably, or not, I know, but in my opinion, the major economic downfall is going to be China, right? No one's talking about that. The black swan has already been identified by some individuals. I think that the LIBOR OAS spread is reminiscent to what's going on in China in the credit markets. Put that aside. So if you see a geopolitical event happen, maybe Arab Spring 3.0, or you start to see other parts of the former Soviet Union want to become part of Russia, that's going to definitely create tension between the United States and Russia. Short term, I think that they're going to have cooler heads. Cooler heads are going to prevail, and this is going to be put outside the window. But what happens when they taper? You're going to see more dislocations around the world, and that's when things are going to get dicey, in my opinion. So, long story short, when it comes to black swans and David Morgan, what I talked about earlier in this interview, 
I meant to say earlier in this podcast. But if you look at what David Morgan said, that the only way that gold and silver are not going to go up are black swan events. Okay, we have one black swan event in China. In my opinion, that could potentially send gold prices lower. But on the other hand, you have issues going on the geopolitical front. Okay, so the way that I look at short-term bullish for gold and silver, if you continue to have geopolitical events arise, if you have tensions between Russia or other parts of the world where the United States may levy sanctions upon these world powers, I mean, that's going to create some tension, no doubt in my mind. So that's bullish for gold and silver, in my opinion. What's bearish for gold and silver, maybe in a few years, is China. If China blows up, they deleverage. That's going to create a deflationary head fake in my opinion so we have two black swans one black swan already identified by me and then the second one on the geopolitical front that is somewhat hard to determine because we don't know how these events are going to take fold but if you start to see that happen well it could be quite interesting what David Morgan may be saying may be partially true and partially wrong right on one end China may be bearish for gold and silver, but on the geopolitical front, that black swan event, as Jim Sinclair talked about, he said that this was a excuse me, he said that this was a black swan. So if that's a black swan, that could be bullish for gold and silver. So looking at the metals from potential two black swan events, it's quite tricky. And in the short term, we shall see how these events take hold, especially with Ukraine and Russia. Hopefully, cooler heads prevail. Anyways, guys, thanks for listening. Talk to you later. Bye.